Hey guys, it's James with TFB TV. Unfortunately, it seems like I have to do this video every couple of years because there's always a pandemic or an election or the threat of a ban or whatever. So today we're going to talk about what guns and gun parts and accessories, ammo, whatever, that you should buy today and what you should pay for it so you don't get totally ripped off. It's still possible to pay yesterday's prices for what could be today's scarce commodity if you just spend a little bit of time looking around. As many of us know, the current presidential administration recently urged Congress to pass laws banning so-called assault weapons and high capacity magazines. You guys know we're guns, not politics, so we're not gonna engage in any political debate on the program today, but we are going to talk about the facts, and the facts are that the Biden administration has said that they're going to be pushing for a ban on certain types of firearms. So before we get into the list, let's go over an underlying assumption. That assumption is that any new legislation, if it were passed, would resemble the 1994 assault weapons ban that sunset in 2004. That is to say, no magazines that hold over 10 rounds, and semi-automatic detachable magazine rifles would either be outright banned or stripped of certain characteristics such as threaded barrels, pistol grips, non-fixed stocks, etc. There's always the possibility that an outright ban and confiscation could occur, in which case your investment would be theoretically worthless. But I think we understand that that's a worst case scenario and it's much less likely to unfold than the scenario I just described that is like a revival of the 1994 assault weapons ban. That ban grandfathered in certain firearms manufactured prior to the date of the ban, and those firearms skyrocketed in value because they became functionally instant collector's items. So let's start with something cheap, AR-15 magazines. I would say buy as many as you can right now. This one's a no-brainer, but it is possible to mess it up. I think Magpul P mags might be a good idea, and I do have many of those. However, I have a personal bias in terms of stockpiling towards your standard Stainag aluminum bodied USGI AR 15 or M16 magazine. Notice I said aluminum. There are a lot of steel magazines that are out there, but at least from a practical standpoint, steel magazines are heavier and therefore harder to store. On top of that, steel will corrode in conditions where aluminum will not. And while there are some minor exceptions like steel magazines, magazines that might become super scarce if there were a ban, such as like the HK416 steel magazines, the smarter bet's to go with aluminum. I'd make sure to buy aluminum magazines from government suppliers as well. I like d &H magazines. They're a government contractor. I like OK Industries, also a government contractor. It's easy to find d &H or OK Industries magazines for under $10 right now. In fact, I just recently bought a few 10-packs for under $100 ship. They're lightweight, they'll last forever, they're from proven military suppliers. I'll say that AK magazines are a very close runner-up, but they're typically steel, they can rust, and they're quite heavy. Additionally, there's a lot more knowledge, a lot more homework, if you will, required to purchase good AK-47 magazines. You can get magazines from the same country, but they'll be made in different ways out of different materials in different places, and therefore will be of different quality. Failure. And you might not discover this until it's time for you to use them or to sell them. Fuck! While AK mags are good, and I've stocked up on quite a few myself, there's no reason to get into AK magazines instead of AR magazines, unless you're trying to speculate like this is some sort of sick, twisted investment, and you're going to be one of those buttholes who isn't upset whenever they become banned because you just made a lot of money, you sick son of a bitch. Relatedly, I think buying AR-15 lower receivers is a smart idea, and that's my number two, or number four, depending on how you're looking at the list. For that matter, if I had $1,000 to spend and I had the choice of spending it on a complete AR or buying 10 to 15 lower receivers, I'd go with the lowers. For those of you who are unfamiliar, the lower receiver of the AR-15 is the registered component, and therefore, that's the part considered to be the firearm. So if we went under the assumption that firearms manufactured prior to any sort of ban would be grandfathered in, then barring some sort of previously unheard of ban on building out an AR-15 lower receiver, it's almost certain that the other components of that firearm would be unregulated, barrels, upper receivers, hand guards, stocks, etc., 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 and therefore you'd be able to build out your AR-15 lowers just as if there were no ban. And that's the other thing. ARs are pretty easy to build versus, say, AKs, at least for home gunsmiths. 
As far as discussing which receivers to buy and how much to pay for them, it's a tough call between talking about buying budget level, economy, $40 lower receivers. That's your basement, like 40, 50 bucks for say an Anderson lower or bucking up another 20 to $50 to buy a name, brand, or even a boutique lower receiver. In my personal opinion, and based on prior political, pandemic, whatever scares, the name brands tend to hold value and to be more desirable than the more budget-minded options. Accordingly, for brands, I think dollar for dollar, I like Arrow. I'm buddies, full disclosure, I'm buddies with the guys at Arrow, but they sell them for a pretty reasonable price, but they are top quality. If you can find Bushmaster or DPMS lowers, even though those companies have been kind of sold off, I think that they at least carry some brand recognition and you can probably find them for under $70, $75. And while I do very much like Rock River Arms, Noveski, Bravo Company, LMT, those lowers typically command a very high premium over their counterparts. That might not make the investment worthwhile, but I'm not going to tell you to not buy them. In fact, if I had to choose between, say, one boutique lower or two budget lowers, I think I would probably go reluctantly with one of the premium brand. But that said, there's good arguments to be made from either decision. So, you know, if you'd rather have more cheap lowers, I'm not going to stop you. Uh, and if you think that it's a better investment to get fewer, more expensive lowers, go for it. As a side note, I wouldn't worry too much about parts and ammo, especially if there's a ban. Both are going to get very scarce and prices are going to go through the roof. As you see, especially with ammo, it's happening already. But again, I think it's highly unlikely that ammo or the unserialized components of a firearm are going to be banned anytime soon. It's very likely, in my opinion, that supply will catch up to the demand after the initial panic subsides. Yes, bolt carrier groups, barrels, and especially ammunition have been scarce and priced out of this freaking world during times of political uncertainty. But again, I don't think that they're going to be permanently banned like say an AK-47 would. Moving on to number three. Factory 9mm Glock magazines that hold more than 10 rounds. I wouldn't buy a 10 round Glock 26 magazine, but I might make sure to pick up some Glock 19 or Glock 17 magazines. Even better, maybe some 20 or 30 round plus stick mags. They should be anywhere between 20 and $35 depending on capacity. Don't get the Korean knockoffs, just get the Glock factory magazines. It's tempting to stock up on those Magpul magazines because with a 1250 street price, they're pretty much exactly half the price of a standard Glock magazine. But the reason for this is that Glock makes the best magazine for Glock, so they're going to enjoy the highest demand. Moreover, they're still reasonably priced, only a little bit more expensive than their clones. Not only are Glock some of the most popular handguns out there, and therefore Glock 9mm the most popular caliber of the most popular handgun, uh, but there are people out there who don't even own Glock firearms that need Glock magazines. Think about it. There are examples like the Ruger PC-9 Carbine, the Aero EPC that's coming out, the B&T APC-9 Pro, the CMMG Banshee, etc., etc., etc. All of these are popular firearms that use Glock magazines. For number two, I want you to get kinky. Any oddball carbine, pistol, rifle, pistol caliber carbine, whatever, that you've had a crush on. If it has a detachable magazine, if it's got a folding or collapsing stock, if it has the ability to mount a folding or collapsing stock and or a threaded barrel, there's a good chance it's already being considered for some form of ban. While you can temporarily skate around that with the AR-15 or the AK-47 through buying receivers in advance of a ban, it's trickier with guns like the SIG MPX or the MCX, the H&K SP5 series, the Galil Ace, Ruger PC Carbine, some kel subguns, and even the politically correct Ruger Mini-14. It's difficult or nearly impossible to find receivers for these guns where you could essentially own a temporal place marker that would allow you to buy the registered component, have it grandfathered in, and then build it out tomorrow. You can do that with the AR-15, you can even do that with the AK-47, but it becomes much more difficult with these more boutique firearms that I mentioned, because even if you could hypothetically get that serialized receiver now, good luck trying to find the parts to build out some of these guns. So I would say that if there's a gun you've been eye-fucking for the past couple of months, you better carpe all them DMs and just take the plunge right now, especially if you can find it at a fair price. 
shop around, don't get scalped. Now for my number one pick, I'm gonna say foreign made AK type rifles. I guess more generally, I would say any foreign made rifle or braced pistol, but if I had to nail it down, I would say the AK-47 and I'm going to explain why. First, this is something that the president can do via executive order, literally with the stroke of a pen. The president can ban semi-automatic magazine-fed rifles from coming into the country, and in fact, I'm shocked it hasn't happened already. Accordingly, this is number one on my priority list. While there could be workarounds like, for example, importing parts kits and building imported parts kits on domestic receivers, I'm not sure that I would trust that that's going to happen, or if it did, that the gun would be the same quality as if it were manufactured in its country of origin. As an example, and this has happened before, I'm not going to name any names, but I think you guys know who I'm talking about, where you had a company or companies importing good foreign-made AKs, bringing them to the United States, and in order to legally import them, they had to make modifications, and they performed these modifications so badly that these otherwise nice AKs become neutered pieces of trash. So why the AK specifically? First of all, it's one of the most popular, well-known, and most sought-after semi-automatic rifles of all time. That also makes it the most notorious, and high profile is a bad thing during an anti-gun administration. Second, and perhaps more importantly, most, if not all, American-made AKs are just parkerized shit sticks with trunnions made out of recycled matchbox cars, and they still somehow command a $1,000 or more premium. So what I'm trying to say is if you want a good AK, I'm going to wholeheartedly recommend that you pick up a foreign-made AK like a Zostava M70 or any Arsenal AK and do this like yesterday. If I had to go with one or the other, I'd probably try to get a Zostava M70, M90, M92, something like that for $1,000 or less. The M70 is the more traditional 762 by 39 AK-47, probably your best bet, and I think you could pick one up for around 900 bucks street price. Another thing to be on the lookout for is the Zostava M90, which I recently reviewed on TFB TV. It's a 223-556 AK. That is, it's an AK that shoots the same type of ammo as most AR-15s. There are apparently already some in the country, but they've just been imported for the first time over the past few weeks, so there won't be many. I would snap one of those up immediately if I were given the chance. In other words, I think that AKs, Arsenal, Zostava, that's the way to go. Well, gang, this video is bittersweet for me. I f***ing hate making videos like this, but I love making sure that you guys are prepared, and I love helping everyone out with knowledge that I've had since the Clinton era assault weapons ban. As I said earlier, this is all relatively speculative, and I could be totally wrong about some of this, or all of it. For that matter, I'm hoping that we won't see anything resembling a 1994 ban, but my point is that if you're able to, as we sit here today, I would buy all of the things on this list for a normal price. If you're patient and you shop around, you should be able to get these at non-panic prices. In fact, many of them, like the $10 AR magazine, will never get any cheaper no matter what happens. So it isn't as if you're losing money. And at the end of the day, you're supporting us in the gun industry, ban or no ban. Speaking of support, thank you guys so much just for watching. If you like the content, subscribe. Make sure you go to patreon.com slash tfbtv or preferably subscribestar.com slash tfbtv. Subscriber, not subscriber, supporter, not supporter. I don't care. I'm just glad you're watching. Thanks a ton. Stay tuned.